Here is a YouTube presentation that is excellent. It's called Hidden Towers, Radio Frequency, and Mind Control. It's a great little movie. I won't take the time because I'm running out of time here to tell you what it's about. Go watch it. Microchip implants. We have equipment that detects microchip implants, and from the people I scan, about 15% have them. They do all kinds of different things. Some are just tracking chips where they want to know where you're going. Some are biotelemetry, which send out telemetry. Some are in the other direction where you can send and cause people to have certain things happen to them. Uh, most of it was done for identification. I think for the most part, now that they've got the directed energy weapon systems figured out, that they're going to stop doing the chips because it's just too big a deal to try to chip everybody. But if you can have their uh, DNA and you can address each individual person on a DNA basis from these towers, from the matrix, you got it made. You got what you need. These are a couple other uh, harassment weapons. These are uh, lasers because I have people that get different kind of laser attacks and the people still do use lasers to attack other individuals. <clears throat> This is the picture of the Iridium satellite. Now, with the, this is a, a group of satellites that are geostationary that cover the planet. The next diagram is the planetary coverage. I know it's rather small for you to see, but there isn't a square inch of the world that isn't covered by these satellites. There's a, a total of uh, 70, I know they lost one because they crashed one into, or some, somebody crashed one of them, but I think there's 76 total satellites. This was a private phone system until the United States Defense Department took it over. Iridium went out of business, so the Defense Department took it over. But it covers every piece of the planet. So our little attack visit yesterday might have been from an Iridium satellite. One of the things that I also have uh, on the website here is the law that allows the government to do bioweapons experiments on the citizens. Title 50, Chapter 13. Uh, chapter, uh, let me see, Title 50, Chapter 32, Section 1520 was the original. 1520 said that Defense Department and their uh, different uh, subcontractors could do bioweapons experiments on any civilian population with 30 days' notice to anybody in authority. How does that make you feel? And this was 1996. I went to Barbara Boxer when somebody pointed this out to me. I actually met with her. I said, why would you people who are supposed to have our welfare as your interest to carry out, would you ever have the Defense Department put a law on it that would turn us into guinea pigs? She said, well, I don't know. I didn't even know there was this law. So I said, okay. She said, I'll find out. So she writes to the Department of Defense. I've got the letter. Department of Defense comes back and says, oh, we don't do that. We don't do that. But then, about six months later, I'm, I look at it up again, and it says it's been repealed. I said, look at that. We did something. We got it repealed. Next defense uh, appropriations bill, they put on 1520A. Now, 1520A says, basically, that you, can, uh, you have to get permission from everybody that you would want to do a bioweapons experiment on, with the exception of any law enforcement purpose. What's that? Well, that's a different one. That's a different one. So anyway, the original non-lethal weapons was under the control of the Department of Defense. The next thing we know, Lethal weapons development now goes over under the control of the Attorney General. So now, law enforcement purpose, Attorney General, that's what they're up to. DARPA, Defense Advanced Projects Agency. I love their, I love their little front cover. It's got a picture of everybody standing there. They're just folks like us, you know. Only problem is, is that they're installing brain gates in people. This is another uh, piece of information that's on my website. And this one has to do with this little experiment they did on a young man who was a paraplegic. There's a picture of the microchip. They drill, he was a crippled individual. He had a car accident. They drill a hole in his head. They put this interface chip in. 
And next thing you know, he's playing Pong with his mind. You know, the old Pong game with the pucks and the ball going back and forth. This shows a close-up of one of the actual pins that went down out of this 100-pin interface. And here's a picture of him. They originally were just doing sketches of him. Here's him playing Pong. This is the interface cable going straight through his skull. And uh, you know the guy's name, yeah, because later on here there was an actual picture of him, which I'm going to pull up, because they did release. Uh, here's the scientist that invented it. These are all in universities, by the way. You know, a lot of the DARPA research on this stuff is in individual universities. And there's a diagram also of how the, little, the, the brain tap goes. So where this is going is that soon they're going to want to install a brain interface chip so that you can directly interface with computers. And the way they're going to sell this one to all the kids is, you know, now you're out of college, you've got a PhD, but the problem is, is that the kid over here only got, in high school, he's got the brain interface. So he can think 500 times faster than you can. Because he just plugs himself into a computer and has the computer assist him on anything that he needs to know or do. He can calculate, think, lightning, lightning speed beyond yourself. So if you don't get a chip like this, you're not going to be competitive. And that's how they're going to do it. They're going to say you, the operation is going to be optional, but you know, you're know, you going to be a dunce compared to somebody that's got this brain power. There is a, a picture on the internet of the young man. That is the fellow that, uh, that did get the brain interface. And he, he, he was very pleased with it because he was unable to move his body. And that's a, that's a good thing, you know. I mean, anytime you can use medical stuff to help people. This is Los Alamos research. This is a brain scanning machine. Your head goes in this piece right here. And what the machine is going to do is it's going to read your mind. This is the new lie detector. Pretty scary, like just out of 1984. You put this thing on your head. There's some other pictures. This is what it looks like on their TV screen. When you're, and they're able to tell what the activity is. So if you are an individual and they put something in front of you and it stimulates a part of the brain that means you're a criminal, then you're in trouble. It's the brain police, thought police. It really is, this is the instrument of the thought police. Here's an, uh, a close-up view. And this is all right, right on the uh, Los, Al Los, Los Alamos website. Okay, here we go. They got to get me this. They got to get me this projection unit next time. I really, because I really would like you to see the details on this stuff. Anyway, that's it. The other, uh, the other thing is that you, you guys, you should be able to know what this is just by looking at it. What's that? MRI. Okay. Let's read what the headline says on this particular story. MRI lie detection to get first day in court. Here is a guy that's gone to a company called No Lie MRI out of San Diego because he said that he didn't do it. So to prove that he didn't do it, he went and took the No Lie MRI and they ended up scanning his brain and deciding that he was not responsible for a crime. In India? Yeah. YouTube, 60 Minutes did a whole section on that. So you can pull up YouTube and look at, read your mind. January 4th of 09, a brain imaging story, 13 minutes on YouTube. I'm kind of flashing through these here. Uh, the trans, one of the interesting things is transcranial magnetic stimulation. They're now going to solve everybody's mental problems by putting electric currents through your head. It kind of sounds like the old uh, shock treatment, doesn't it? But this is much more sophisticated. They're putting specific kind of energies through your brain to neutralize different kinds of thoughts and problems. And I'm sure the behavioral scientists will say it's going to correct whatever difficulties they think you have. Homeland Security detects terrorist threats by reading your mind. 
body, t uh, it has a, this is a thing called mal, mal intent. And this is a actual mobile uh, screening system with ramps, and they're going to run all kinds of people through it that go to events and go to aircraft and all that. It says it has a series of sensors and imagers that read your body temperature, heart rate, and respiration for unconscious tells invisible to the naked eye. Signals terrorists and criminals that, may, that they may display in advance of an attack. This is a mobile screening, a screening laboratory. And there is an actual video presentation with this that's about 15 minutes that shows how it works. It really is surprising that they wanted to show it to us, but it is really something else. Okay, here on the private sector comes the Imitov system. This is a brain wave helmet that you will wear first applications to play games with. But where it's going is, is that you'll put this thing inside a hat and you'll wear it as you walk around and then computers that, are in, that will be embedded in the environment will communicate with it. And this thing will not only read your thoughts, but it will also put video information into your, eye, into your eye circuits so that you'll actually see just like the cyborgs did in the uh, Terminator series, you know, you would see the data in his eyeball, him, what he was viewing. This is going to do the same thing. So that when you go, say, to an airport, airport will know who you are the minute you walk into proximity of the readers. It will then give you your flight information in your eyeball. You'll then do something to confirm that you're there and present. It will give you other information that you need. So this whole idea is, to, is that the environment will become part of the overall brain s structure and that we will then be totally connected no matter where we go. Uh, okay. Here's the next one. This one is new instruments of surveillance and social control, wireless technologies which target target the neural function of the brain. They kind of call it a psycho-civilized society. Psycho-civilized. Computers embedded in the environment. Human body is going to be rewired into a biological antenna. So in other words, they're going to take your bioenergy and they're going to tune it so that you start to be directly connected with this network. Yeah. Biochip gateway implanted into the brain. It's on the way. Here is a home type of brainwave system that you can get right now. Neural stimulation using moving magnetic signals. The coil shatai is for spiritual personality transformation, overcoming fear, sadness, and anger. Running through quickly some of the bioweapons. Here's a kit, high voltage bio. Uh, get this is a blaster where you electromagnetic electromagnetic blaster similar to a microwave oven so you can do that here's another kit company microwave gun so these things are around if you want to you can join the directed energy weapons 2009 this is a conference they had for all the weapon builders here is a gun which is a gun by Raytheon. You know, Raytheon, the same people that made the original microwaves are now making the weapons. Here's a guy at the Raytheon table at a weapons convention turning on the gun and blasting himself. I guess he had to convince himself it was painful because he looks like he's getting a lot of pain. This is a small version instead of a version that's the size of a truck. So this one here will work on a more localized basis. You can put it in your neighbor's house and attack. Am I out of time? 30 seconds. I would have loved to have you had some questions and question and answer. I know you're raising your hand. I don't, you may have to talk to me outside because I've got 30 seconds. So at any rate, hopefully I've given you some insight. You know, when I prepared this, it, it was depressing. It was depressing to me because we're not going in the right direction. We're building all this further destruction stuff. So we've got to do something. I don't know what to tell you, but, you know, sending your money to Washington is probably not a good idea. That's basically the way, the way I handle it. Anyway, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you.